just about sailing July. Now the only reason I took out the um, front port lights is because I had to paint the outside but of course when I took them out that also mean, meant I had to clean all the gunk off them, it also meant I had to do the lining on the inside and as I said before every job turns into needing to do the everything single thing on the boat. But before we look at putting the front port lights back in <clears throat> I, I've kind of, this lining stuff is horrible but a better way of doing it, because I crinkled it up last time, is to do no more than kind of an arm's length at a time. So here what I'm doing is I've kind of, I've glued it up, let it go tacky, etc. So you have to leave it for 10 minutes or so, and then kind of stick it on. It sticks really, really well. Um, so do the back bit first, then smooth it down um, with the roller, and then go on and do the, the next bit. So this, this seems to work really, really well. Um, but it's one of these things that you've kind of got to practice, but this did seem to kind of work and smooth out quite nicely. Um, having said that, it's not an enjoyable job to do, so let's finish this off. And then I had to do the lining for the front windows, and that involved a bit more palaver. Anyway, let's have a look at it. So... Um, the existing windows are really just getting a, um, uh, a clean up and then being replaced but obviously I needed to or wanted to get rid of all the holes and things so this is, these are the, um, I thought there was just a tiny little bit of lining <laughs> where the old, where the front windows were but it's actually quite a big bit and you can see it's disgusting on this one the glue seems to have come undone between the foam which is now just this dusty powder horrible stuff and the backing on, on this one is much better um, because it's actually, this is the other side, it's come out um, that the foam has actually come off. So, and they've also sort of curled this over in a particular way, stripping some of the foam off. So there's a few complications there. So as I was saying at one point, I think in the last video, if you do anything on the boat, you kind of have to do everything. So, <coughs> I've cut these slightly oversized, but... Quite a big hunk of new stuff. I've marked roughly where the windows are, that's where the, the flap is, and um, that should be relatively easy to kind of stick on. I hope so. I've just really got to um, clean up the old windows and then get them put back on. So here we are back in the epoxy workshop, um, and the job today is to clean out the um, uh, the, the front windows, which are, are already of the clamp-in type, which you've seen from a previous video, and I can't remember when that was, but it's when I originally took them out, so they, they already have the clampy bits on them, and they are fairly disgusting. All the stuff needs to be kind of scraped out and cleaned, etc. So I've got a variety of tools, brushes, um, ubiquitous acetone, some stuff called sticky stuff remover, which works actually remarkably well. I think it got up from B&Q or one of those type of places. That's a big, it's like Bunnings, except without so many products. Um, yeah, so not fun, but nice when it's done. Um, and they're all, there are also, and I'll get to this um, at some point, there are some screws that got stuck in here um, when I took them out and just the head sort of sheared off. Uh, which is why I'm going to squirt some of that sort of anti-lock stuff that you do between stainless steel and aluminium, otherwise you get problems in the future. Anyway, boring job, let's get on with it. Not sure how much of this I'll show, I might just show the before and after to be quite honest. So one of the things we can do when we're doing boring tasks is to get some decent music playing. And I wish I could actually put this in the background, but I would get three strikes probably from YouTube's uh, music recognition copyright thing, which is strange because um, despite all the all the music I do in my Christmas specials, <laughs> YouTube doesn't actually recognise it as music. But anyway, for the bits that aren't videoed, I will be. I'm going to have a Beatles day while I am um, while I do these windows. So um, starting with Hard Day's Night. So you can you can sing this along in your head if you want while I'm doing these windows. Should really be George Formby, shouldn't it? He did a song about windows anyway. Right, so I've just finished the first one, one of the smaller ones. Or well, when I say finish, um, you know, there's always a little bit more that you could do. Um, I, I've, I had a sort of a, a lump about that size of, of horrible gooey stuff that I've taken away. Um, 
so it is not perfect but it is all right and funnily enough I've paused it obviously because of the reason I explained about the music but we're just on Let It Be by the Beatles so if Paul McCartney says Let It Be Let It Be Right so I've got the foam I need to put it on either side and also, you can't really see that, that's the window and the heads and the other one. Now what I hadn't intended to do was to replace all of the lighting. <laughs> but I really don't think I've got any choice. So had I have decided to do all of the lighting in the first place, I would have ripped this up. I don't know what I would have done. But anyway, I want to get these windows in. So I'm going to have to again tack around, just around the outside and then figure out what I'm going to do. Um, such fun. Right, so I'll film this before we take that out because it makes the light levels go. So that one's fine. Very happy with that one, nice and flat. Delighted with the one above the head. This one, yeah, just made a little bit of a, a judgment error. Had the had this hanging rather than folded over backwards. And, oh well, there you go. Still, every time I see that. I shall think of what an idiot I am, so anyway, I might redo that, I don't know, we'll have to see. And here we are with the holes cut out. So I've just got to fix a few of those um, broken screws and then I can get the little windows in and then it will be time to fiddle about with the hatch and <laughs> shortly after that I should be waterproof, at least when it rains. All right, so most of the screws in, in, in these slabs came off quite nicely, but as you can see, um, hopefully one or two of them, uh, they were absolutely stuck in and I had to end up drilling the heads off just to kind of take this off. Now what I need to do now um, is to obviously get these out and fix them somehow. Now I've come up with a plan, I'm not sure if that will work. Obviously when I put these back in, and I'm going to do this with the other windows as well, with the new windows, um, you can get some stuff because the screws are stainless and these are aluminium and that's not a good combination because you will get them kind of welding to each other but there is some stuff that you can put on and it wasn't put on in this instance um, but anyway let's have a, let's see what we're going to do about getting this sort of stuff I'm not sure if this is going to work or not but I always say that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't we shall see so the idea is to drill these out and I've got three drills uh, one of which is too big uh, another one which is too small, another one which is much too small. Uh, and see if if I have to go for the one that's too big, then obviously what I'll do is I'll sort of fill it in with epoxy. But I'm going to start with the smallest one first. And then the idea is to um, use this. Is this the tap or the die? This is the tap, isn't it? To um, cut a new thing and then put one of these in. So anyway, let's, let's see if this works. And of course I don't want to drill all the way through um, because that would ruin the water tightness of it. Now this is really bad practice, but I'm going to see if I can just cut into the holes that I've just drilled and see if that will suffice. So I'm literally just cutting a new thread. So effectively what I've done is I've used a a 3.47 millimeter instead of a 3.3 .3, um, to drill out for an M4 tap. Um, so the threads probably aren't as deep as they would be normally, but I think they're deep enough. I mean, I think there's there's enough here to clamp this on. Um, uh, so I don't have an issue with that. I think that'll be absolutely fine. So I've got away with it with this one. I'll do the other one, see if I get away with it. I mentioned this stuff, hopefully you can see it. Ultra Safety Systems Ultra Tough Gel. This is the stuff I'm going to coat onto the um, 
stainless screws before putting them in and put them on the ones that I put on the new sea glaze <laughs> and interestingly because sometimes it's very difficult in the UK to get products from the USA this is actually a, a West Palm Beach Florida product so it managed to get all the way over to the UK so it's um it's got neat it's got a little brush in the squidgy thing so windows in looking great um, and the boat is an absolute tip so I've run out of time unfortunately which is a shame because it's cooled down a little bit but I thought I'd give a quick tour of um, how scruffy the boat is because I had wanted to sort of clean things up but hopefully I'll do that for the start of the next video so a few other bits and pieces going on waiting for a few parts to do with the water tank which is under here let's have a quick look at what I've done so far um, kind of didn't cover this but the uh, kitchen area the galley uh, that's going to get a complete makeover um, and I started by pulling some bits and pieces up this the next bit slightly out of sequence because obviously I've um, done this headlining since right, then first thing to get rid of this horrible thing in the, in the back here and I think it's only held on with one screw Held on by two big screws. So right, let's see if I can stand out of the light. I think this will just, yeah. Slid out. There is some sort of shelving behind it. Um, that's interesting. So I should actually have quite a lot of cupboard space behind here when I strip this out. Can't wait to start doing this actually lovely pristine fiberglass this just looks absolutely <laughs> as good as the day that it was laid up it's probably the best bit of internal fiberglass in the whole boat <laughs> Perhaps I should just leave uh, this is all going to be ripped uh, well changed not necessarily ripped out it's going to be kind of extended and so on um new windows in need to put the curtains up curtain rails and all that sort of stuff which i've discussed lots of varnishing to do um holding tank is going to go in here I was really, really, really hoping to get away with not doing all of the lining, but I'm going to have to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip all the rest of it out. And as I say, the next session I'll be spending tidying the boat up. So hopefully when you tune in next month, it'll be a tidy boat. Yeah, OK, I couldn't leave it just like that. So I've had a quick whip round, got all the to tools in place. So it's a little bit tidier. What can I say? There's some stuff in there that's going to go into storage. Um, and I've basically got all the tools together so they're all in the right sort of boxes um, and I've pulled the lining out by the way I haven't I haven't glued these up on the sides I've just tacked the corners so I've, I've pulled the rest of the lining out and that literally took about half a second. And I've also, while I'm here, just realised, because I was going to take the hatch off, these bolts are OK. You can see those. Um, they're quite exposed. These ones have been glassed over, so there's a little bit of grinding that I need to do before I can actually take that off. But the other thing that I was wondering in the heads compartment, and do uh, drop me a message if you've got an idea about this. When previously I was um, sort of mocking up holding tank that would kind of fit in the space in this corner um, I got a comment and it was I think it was this island pack rat and I think that's Vern Vern sorry if I got your name wrong and sorry if I've said Vern twice and it's not Vern I've said it four times now I think I'll stop but said basically look why because I made a joke saying look I could just glass fibre over this and that'd be fine and he basically said yeah well kind of why not you know you, you know it's glass fibre why don't you make a glass fibre 
version of it. And I'm actually thinking, you know, why not? Rather than spend sort of three or four hundred pounds, I've got loads of glass fibre left that I didn't use for other things. I could make a box out of plywood. I could make it strong and light and probably make it fit slightly better than that. And now that I've done quite a lot of glass fibre work, I'm not desperately scared of doing that type of stuff. So um, leave your comments, tell me what you think. Anyway, that's it for this month. There might be one at the end of the month, there might not. Uh, need to get on and do some of the other jobs, um, including the through holes um, and the hatch. So see you next time. Cheers.